Howdy, y'all. It's me, your friendly neighborhood Pokemaniac, coming at you with a southern drawl and a brand new episode of Pokemon Platinum. In the last episode, we got ourselves through the Lost Tower and a bunch of scary and mourning people, and we got to Solision Town, which I've been in for just a little too long, and now I've caught their accent. Uh, okay, guys, uh, enough of that, uh, but we shall begin Ooh. our exploration of the Silesian Ruins. And, ooh, lo again, very ambient. Uh, coming in here, you can see there are a bunch of branching paths, and, ooh, what's this? Some ancient writing upon the wall? Uh, well, I can't read this gibberish. Uh, actually, you can, so as you can see, it is a weird font type, but it is uh, legible nonetheless. Again, in English, just letting you know that English is the universal language compared, uh, as represented by uh, Pokemon. Uh, man, I, we'll, we'll get to the... Remind me to come back to this point. I know you can't actually do that because it's a pre-recorded video, but hopefully saying that will remind me because I, it would be funny if this font was different. Anywho, top right... Lower left, top right, top left, top left, lower left. I'm not going to remember that. We're going to hit everything, but that basically gives you the answer to the maze. Uh, so, well, what was that first one again? Okay, so top right, lower left, top right, top left, top left. Okay, so let us start exploring. Uh, we're going to go into the wrong ones first, so we can... Ooh. Isn't that just a boulder? It's a rock! Uh, yeah, so, uh, there are rocks here and a bunch of dead ends. Um, so some of these are, in fact, going to be useless. And top right, okay, top right, top right, top right. So we need to go left. Um, some of these are going to be useless, um, but some of them will have really good items in them if you're playing Pokemon Platinum. That's right, guys. Uh, just one other thing on the list of why you should play Platinum over Diamond and Pearl. Um, the items in Platinum in the Salacion Ruins are so much better than in Diamond and Pearl. It's not, it's not even close. Like, that Firestone's better than anything else that you get in here in uh, Diamond and Pearl. Like, it's, it's actually ridiculous. So, this is the right path, and... Uh, well, looky there. And there's someone else in here exploring the ruins, I suppose. Uh, who do we have up front? Um, we're gonna throw Autumn up front because I think Autumn will have a better time if this guy uh, wants to uh, wants to battle. Get his uh, butt handed to him. Uh, up here, okay, so nothing on that stone. So again, you can just go right through, through this little maze. Um, or, I, I'd heard the hidden machine defog was somewhere in these ruins. It's just that I seem to be lost. What, what with everything looking the same? Now what? I could use help here. Uh, learn, learn how to read that uh, weird uh, Mr. Saturn font uh, in the room above this one. You'll get it. Uh, moving right along. I absolutely forgot what I was going to say, and that guy didn't want to battle us, so that threw me off. Oh, I guess these ruins really are confusing. But yeah, so everything does look the same. But again, if you just even if you didn't notice that um, first little you know cave scrawl that... Uh, would tell you exactly where you know the which path to go. Uh, you're not going to have too hard of a time figuring it out. So, uh, bottom left, I believe, is the correct path. And what do you have to say? Ancient ruins rife with unknown. There has to be a meaning. Unknown, unknown what? But the significance eludes me, and that's gotten me cranky. <laughs> Calm down, Indiana Jones. Don't want to make you cranky here. All right, just Carl. Oh, great. Okay, so he sends out a Geodude. I was expecting a Bronzor, because that's usually what you guys have. Um, so I have been duped. Duped, I say. Uh, but a Mach Punch. Probably two, honestly. We'll make quick work of this Geodude. And ooh, Rock Polish. That's really nice, but it is not, in fact, going to help you in the slightest, because Mach Punch has priority. You can Rock Polish all you want. Polish your rocks as much as you... Could have phrased that a little better. Rock... Polish your rocks as much as you want to, but uh, it's not gonna stop me from punching him. <laughs> there it is, there it is. Okay, and next up is Geodude. Sure, we'll switch out and we'll give Autumn the uh, screen time he deserves, because Autumn is the hardest core of our team. 
Um, he's really, really kind of the, you know, that, that the pillar that holds the rest of the team up, I'll tell you what. And uh, nice little water pulse. This should take it out, no problem. I cannot, even at level 21, I don't see a Geodude living that. Yeah, ain't no way. And we get, ooh, a nice bit of experience. And last but not least, ah, uh, there's the Bronzor. So yeah, we'll switch out. Um, we're gonna throw Zuko out there. I don't trust Bronzors. They either have, they either have Heat Proof or Levitate. So, Autumn stood a chance, but if it has Levitate, I can't even hit it. If it has Heat Proof, at least I can hit it with Zuko. Um, you know, it's not an immunity. Um, yeah, I'm not. That's definitely not Heat Proof. Um, Bronzor's defenses are way too good for that to be a, a Heat Proof hit. If I did hit it and it had Heat Proof, it probably would have done maybe half. Uh, that's what you know. That's how good Heat Proof is. So it must have had Levitate, so I think that was the right move. Carl, the search must continue. All right, and moving right along, I guess our search must continue as well. Um, more particularly because in our search, we get things like, uh, nope, that's the right way. I goofed. Nope, 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 don't go down. Okay, we really getting our steps in today, boys. Uh, coming down here. Guess lower left? Yeah. Yeah, we get a water stone. There's there's another item in here. I bet you can't guess what it is. But yeah, so uh, I think our search is a little more fruitful than this guy's, if I am being honest. Uh, was it this way? No, it wasn't. Okay. That... Now I'm the one getting lost. That's a little embarrassing. All right, and I believe bottom right is not the correct way to go. So we'll go there. Nothing. Uh, but we're running around. Oh, I guess there's really only one other path that we can uh, go down for that one. Um, I'm pretty sure upper left is incorrect. Nope, upper left was correct. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, I should have like written down or taken a picture of the uh, writing uh, on the wall at that uh, on the first floor. Uh, so this wouldn't happen. But overall, now it seems like, there it is. Okay, so we get ourselves a Thunderstone, which is lovely. So we get one of every Elemental Stone, which is, I, well, the main three Elemental Stones. Uh, we don't get any Shiny Stones or Dawn Stones or Dusk Stones or any of the, those newfangled stones. And back in my day, there were only three Evolution Stones. And we're going to keep moving right along. Uh, this isn't as eventful, probably because my Repel is still up. Um, but uh, there are some wild Pokemon that can be encountered in here. Uh, the one that I have been uh, coyly avoiding. Uh, and some that uh, make quite a... Uh, well, not make a significant difference, but some relatively famous Pokemon. Uh, but you come down here and... That Ruin Maniac is so bad at his job. And we get to uh, basically help ourselves to the spoils. And we get ourselves a nugget. And we get HMO5 Defog. So this is where we find Defog in uh, Pokemon Platinum. You don't get it here in Diamond and Pearl, uh, but you do get a Mind Plate in all three games. And of course, there's a text engraved on the back of it. Two make matter and three make spirit, shaping the world. <laughs> that sounds like a corporate catchphrase. <laughs> Google, two make matter, in three make spirit shaping the world all right and uh you, you can have that one for free google that's on me and last but not least we get an odd incense hmm, seems a little odd so these incenses uh they'll do different things the main reason for these incense though is um oh finally okay we didn't have a repel we were just really lucky here we go and a wild unknown appeared and it appears to be the D. So we got ourselves the D. Fantastic. Uh, all right. Um, oh, that's right. We don't have like any quick balls or anything. So unknown. This is a Pokemon that we haven't seen thus far. It, clearly. Look, I mean, look at this thing. It's kind of weirdly Pokemon shaped like that. There's no way we've seen that. Unknown are very unique Pokemon. They are pure psychic types and they only learn one move. Hidden power. Um, and apparently it got a good one. Thank you very much. Uh, so that's either Hidden Power, Psychic, Flying, Water. I mean, it could be a bunch of different things, honestly. Um, but Unknown, they aren't... 
Well, they aren't great for their battle. And a crit? How dare you, sir? Uh, they aren't known for their battle prowess or anything. They're actually uh, more so used in uh, gimmicks. Um, I kind of want to figure out what that, what that is. Oh, what that hidden power is. Uh, we'll throw Autumn out there, though, because Mud Slap's not going to do a lot of damage, and it'll make hidden power miss. Um, great. Okay, so let's see. Uh, if you didn't know, unknowns have the ability to levitate. Um, also, so it's neutral on Autumn. I don't know quite what that reveals to us, but it still could be like Psychic or something. That would be funny. Uh, but we'll fight uh, hidden power with hidden power uh, and use ours to weaken it a little bit. So, unknown, um, this is not the only form of unknown. Unknown, while they're not known for their battle prowess in the games that they appear in, they are known for their gimmicks, which is that they are the Pokemon that are shaped like letters. So this one looks like the letter D. So we're gonna, uh, that's why we were able to read uh, the text at the, on the, scrawled on the wall at the top room of the Salacion Ruins. We caught ourselves an unknown, not too bad. We give ourselves the D in this household. Anyway, the data is going to be added to the Pokedex. A symbol Pokemon. When alone, nothing happens. However, if there are two or more, an odd power is said to emerge. But yeah, and so they had their own uh, movie named after, or named after them. Their own movie uh, made after them, Pokemon the Third Movie, which happens to be my favorite movie. Uh, funny enough, I, just, I love that movie. Uh, and so yeah, here. So this is all of the. Um, you know, this is unknown script, basically. Uh, you will find unknown in uh, Salacion Ruins. Each floor will have a different group of unknown variations. <laughs> Look at him floating down there in, uh, in the uh, Poke Edge app right there. That's kind of funny. Um, but you can collect unknown and then take him to that kid that we saw in the house, and he will actually give you a seal uh, that is a, you know, for your Pokeball, um, that is a... That is the letter that the unknown you showed him represents. So, uh, anywho, we get a little, nice little little encouraging message uh, after going uh, through the trouble of going through the Salacion Ruins. Friendship. All lives touch other lives to create something anew and alive. Something anew. Hmm. I don't know. I guess it kind of anew and alive. I guess that's what they're going for. Uh, but, yeah. And with that, guys... Uh, that's the entirety of the Salacion Ruins. And we got ourselves the TM for Defog, which means we can go back to... Oh, now I have to find my way out, don't I? Oh, I should have had an escape rope or two. Uh, but we can now go back to uh, the uh, Lost Tower. Okay, good. I was going to say uh, horrible, horrible luck if uh, I did not hit that. But we can go back to the Lost Tower and uh, talk to those, uh, the, the old lady twins, I suppose, uh, who are standing at the top of Lost Tower with Defog. But before we do that, oh, I want that item up there, like real bad. Before we do that, though, I think we're going to go heal up and drop our, uh, uh, we're going to go drop our D in the Pokemon Center. Alrighty, and here we are back in the Lost Tower, and I'm going to show you guys just how easy it is uh, for us to get up here now. And once we get to the foggy floors, we can go hey, over here, and yeah, that's right. I went, I had to go out and catch a uh, Pokemon that can learn Defog just so I wouldn't have to teach it to Warbeak because it's not a fantastic move in battle and it's an HM so it'd be really hard to make him forget it but we got the Zubat sucker because he is also our homie and he sucks blood so it's kind of the uh, logic behind that and looky there now it's all what the heck was that whoa did you guys see that graphical glitch I guess like all the fog uh, around the edges um, I, I don't know I've never seen that happen before that's wild uh, but uh, we have to do it every single floor? That's lame. Uh, the only floor we actually have to do it on is, in fact, this last floor. Uh, but look how fast we got up here, and now we can uh, appease the uh, two old ladies here, the, the old lady twins, uh, you know, whose who's soul... Look at that. That is so peculiar. That is wild. Huh. Um, 
But anywho, now we can uh, blow away the doubt in their heart with defog. So now what do you uh, lovely uh, ladies have to say? Oh, the fog is gone, and with it all the doubt in my heart. This is my thanks. Don't be shy. Take it. And we get ourselves the spell tag, which uh, it's all right. Uh, that Fantina, it's hard to tell what she's thinking, but she has a compassionate heart. You know, she's a regular visitor. Oh, okay. Glad we're still referencing her. Um, but the spell tag's not a great item. You give it to the Pokemon in your lead, and you will run into less wild Pokemon. Yeah, I know, I say that after the whole Wayward Cave debacle, but... Let me make your journey out of this place less frightening. Take this. And we get ourselves the cleanse... Oh, sorry, cleanse tag. What I described... So the cleanse tag, you put it on your lead Pokemon, and uh, it makes your encounters... It makes you encounter less wild Pokemon. The spell tag is a hold item that boosts ghost-type moves, so... <laughs> Boy, mix those up. Just like I mixed the two old ladies up. The last tower is where spirits of the departed Pokemon are put to rest. Those that enjoyed long lives, those whose times were short. All the departed Pokemon shall find solace here. Dang. Well, that was heavy. And with that, uh, we'll meet you back in Salacion Town so we can move right along. All right, back here at Salacion Town after that little detour to go back to the top of the Lost Tower, again, for no real good reason. Let us move on to Route 210, because there is one more place I want to uh, stop before we finish up the episode. And, ooh, Aspear. A what berry? A what pear berry? Uh, so, a spear berries. Uh, again, there's a, quite a variety of berries in this game, and they all have very unique... Uh, overworld sprites like I, I don't know who the artist was for all the berry trees and everything but I'm telling you right now your work is appreciated I'm seeing almost all of your work is appreciated um, I, I see you I see you uh, you you pixel artist you who's been working on berries um and oh which which way to go uh, I think we're gonna go this way first and my goodness, this guy's... I thought I was a level lower. My Pokemon toughened up while working on the ranch. I'm right proud of them. Where are, where are these Pokemon ranches that people keep talking about? My goodness. All right, and Rancher Marco. Uh, live with a... In constant conflict with uh, the rancher across the street, uh, Rancher Polo. Uh, just... I don't know, don't like him. I mean, you can never find him when you need him. Oh, oh, and a nice crit from Zuko. Really really stepping up his game after the whole uh, fog debacle. Uh, but now that he can see clearly now, the fog is gone. We can uh, punch Ponytaws into submission. No problem. And a nice amount of experience from a Ponytaw. Ah, <laughs> your Pokemon should be counted on. Unlike that stupid rancher Polo. I never count on him for nothing. I'll tell you what. Uh, switch over to Autumn. And, okay, so we do need to use our bike here. And, uh, as you can see, we're surrounded by tall grass. Uh, you can't actually ride your bike through tall grass, which is actually, like, accurate um, to real life. And, oh, clever girls. I was trying to avoid them. Yay, we're going to battle with lots of Pokemon. Yay, we're all going to battle. Yay, I'm so excited. I wonder what Pokemon you girls have. Twins, Terry, and Tia. They got Pikachu and Clefairy. Aw, and they got uh, some Pokemon seals too. Really kind of hammering that uh, India. Like, use your seals, use the seals. Um, but we are going to take out that Pikachu. Hopefully before it becomes a problem. And a mock punch on this Clefairy. It's thick. Like, Clefairies are fat, so I don't know if it's going to do... Okay, it didn't do Oko, uh, but it did do a decent chunk. And then that Pikachu was stupid because it used Slam instead of an Electric-type move, which would have been... Far more effective against Autumn. Take that, Pikachu. And wake up, slap. Okay. Chill! My goodness, that was so violent. You see how fast that hand was moving? Uh, but we're going to just throw out a water pulse, but Mach Punch is going to clean up this Clefairy before Autumn has to, has to even do a thing. So, a couple more experience points. Honestly, I'm very glad Autumn grew to level 28 off of that. Uh, Zuko looking good, and there's Terry and Tia. We tried really hard together, but we lost anyway. We tried really hard together, but we didn't win anyway. My goodness, ha have some original thoughts. Didn't your parents raise you to be different? 
Uh, but coming right along over here, we have another battle and an item. So tantalizingly close. Tantalizingly, not tantalizingly. But <laughs> Anywho. Hey, check this out. Look at the luster of my Pokemon's fur. <laughs> oh, it's a breeder, not a snobby person. <laughs> He was just actually excited to show off his Pokemon's fur. So, and he also very excited to show us a Pokemon we haven't seen thus far. Say hello to Elekid. Elekid is a new Pokemon. Uh, well, not really a new Pokemon. It was introduced in Gen 2. Um, I get these confused sometimes. Um, but Elekid was introduced in Gen 2, uh, I'm pretty sure. Yes. And it is a pure electric type Pokemon. It evolves, it is the baby form of Electabuzz. You know, the uh, elect that Electabuzz, you know, of that fame. Um, <laughs> please tell me you guys have watched the <laughs> first season of Pokemon or I'm just gonna sound like an absolute crazy person. Uh, well, it died before we had a chance to finish explaining it, but uh, Electabuzz also got an evolution in this generation uh, that is brand new. Electivire, which is a phenomenal Pokemon. I cannot recommend this thing enough. Um, it was also, it, it was, it was one of the other ones that are in serious consideration uh, for my team when I was, uh, you know, piecing these together. It got beat out by uh, Maytag uh, for a very particular reason. Um, just because uh, we're, we're going to be seeing Electivire regardless if we uh, caught, you know, like an Elekid or not. Um, where the same could not be said for Rotom. So Rotom kind of won out in that uh, little exchange. Uh, but with that, with that ha Happini, um, it got knocked the heck out before it could even do a thing. And level 29, not bad. And Zuko wants to learn Torment. <gasps> No, I think I'm happy with my moves right now. So yeah, we're gonna give up on Torment. Um, Torment's pretty cool. Uh, we've been hit with it before. It makes sure. Hey, hey, did the... <laughs> did you take a good look? Yes, yes, it did actually. Um, so Torment's a move that will uh, it, you your opponent if it's used on a Pokemon that Pokemon cannot use uh, the same move twice in a row, which can be useful in certain situations, particularly if there's a Pokemon that has only one super effective move uh, against you. So then it can't use two in a row. And we're probably gonna have to. We're gonna throw. A, we're gonna throw up a repel up. <laughs> that was the sentence that was coming out of my mouth, guys. Like, I, I, you know what you were getting into uh, when it came to uh, my commentary. All right. Uh, sometimes things will just spill out that almost make seem to make sense, but not quite. Anywho, uh, we're we're gonna. You know what? Let's throw Maytag up. We haven't seen Maytag in this episode, so uh, put Maytag up front so we can. Okay, get up here. Uh, that's another jogger, so he's not going to battle us since it's not Marnin. Uh, but come over here. I'm taking a rest. If I were a bird Pokemon, it would be a roost. <laughs> Good one. Uh, <laughs> you should rest up too. And we get TM51, which is a phenomenal move. It is roost. Man, keep flying forever. Bird Pokemon eventually crash. Roost is a great move for flying type Pokemon almost exclusively. Uh, Roost will, it's basically recover, but for birds. Um, so Roost will restore half of your HP and it will take away your flying type for the rest of the remainder of that turn. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a, like a clever and it sounds like it'd be a gimmick, but it can also be used super strategically uh, in certain battle situations. Um, we're definitely giving that to Warbeak. It's just a matter of when and what we're replacing it with. But for that, oh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. I'll show y'all how tightly I bonded with my daughter. I can't get away with slacking off if I have my Pokemon out. Miss, have some dignity. I'll tell you what. These are the creepiest couple I've ever... Well, they're not a couple. It's Bell and Paul, Ava and Matt. They're the creepiest duo I've seen so far. And whoa! Okay, uh, but they have... One of them has a Rapidash. I'm going to assume that's Paul because he's been around longer. So uh, Rapidash, as you can see, is the evolved form of Ponyta. Uh, if you're playing <laughs> Diamond and Pearl, I hope you love this Pokemon because that's what you're getting. Uh, the Rapidash is definitely the threat, so we're going to be taking that thing out first. Maytag, super speedy, because of that timid nature. Uh, 
going to be moving first. That shockwave should do a decent chunk. Not as much as I was hoping. And as you can see, Rapidash itself is also incredibly fast. Uh, war outspeeding Warbeak even, which is... That's pretty decent, I, I, I have to say. Like, it's, it's a really decent speed. Uh, and that and the Ponyta following up. Um, Maytag, I'll hit Ponyta with the Shockwave. And we'll have Warbeak finish up the Rapidash with a Quick Attack. With Warbeak's, Warbeak's attack and this being Stab, this is going to take it out. Like, easy. I, I was, was not even uh, worried. And we don't get as much experience as I was expecting from a Rapidash, considering the amount we've been getting from Ponytaws, uh, from bat battling all these, uh, these Southerners. Uh, but Rotom, oh, did a lot. Uh, I was, I was, would have been cool if Rotom got the Oko, but uh, I was not expecting it. Let's see how much Quick Attack does. I, it could take it out from here. Easy. Warbe Warbeak OP. Warbeak OP. Oh, and Maytag finally grows to level 28, which is nice. And, oh, not Warbeak though. Can't have it all. Parent and child power couldn't get the do job done. Oh, shoot. I want to say shoot other than shoosh because I feel like that's more that's more southern and coming up here I did not know you were a trainer I thought you were an NPC I'm a rookie breeder but I'll do my very best like no one ever was and aw she looks like she's having a good time breeder amber and she's got herself a Magby, which is another Pokemon we haven't seen thus far Magby's another baby Pokemon that was introduced in gen 2 Yes, it was introduced in Gen 2, I'm sure, alongside Elekid. Uh, Magby is a pure fire type Pokemon. It evolves into Magmar. And Magmar also... Oh, I cannot believe you want you lived that. Magmar also gets an evol a new evolution here in Gen 4, and that is Magmortar. And believe me, if we weren't using Zuko, Magmortar would be on this team. I, it is a powerhouse of a Pokemon. So good. Super strong, cannot recommend it enough. If you if, if you can if you can possibly obtain one, like as long as you're not playing Diamond and Pearl, uh, you, you can get your hands on one. I, I highly recommend it. Um, super cool, excellent design, monstrous special attack. That thing is. It was both Electivire and Magmortar were great additions uh, to their respective lines in the fourth generation. Like just phenomenal. But we're going to hit this Togepi with our uh, Wings of War, uh, which kind of messed up. Hey, man, don't you think it's kind of messed up that we're making our bird beat up an egg? Like, our bird was an egg at one point in time. Also, for that matter, do you think, like, Warbeak would do... Like, if you had, like, a Star Star Ravia, uh, you know, IRL, and it was a female, like... Uh, it's alright, I'm still a rookie. Do you think you'd like have to deal with it like just laying eggs sometimes? And then like what would you do with them? Uh, but coming right up here, the ooh, Cafe Cabine. Freshly squeezed milk. I apologize for all my lactose intolerant uh, viewers out there who got a jump scare just then. Uh, but if you come, <laughs> come up here, you've got this... Uh, Really intimidating gang of Psyduck standing in the way. They are standing firm. They're not inclined to move at all. Uh, they are, there is nothing you can do. Uh, you you will not be moving these Psyducks. Um, so that's making a roadblock here on Route 10. And then we've got this uh, Cafe Cabin. But we will be seeing what the heck's going on in there in the next episode, guys. So hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you liked what you saw, smash that subscribe button. Like, dislike, whatever you're feeling like. And until next time, guys. I will be down in just gallons worth worth of freshly squeezed milk at this cafe. See you in the next one. Running, running in the doors. Running, running here some more. Running in, running in the doors. Running in doors. Pokemon 4th Gen.